Welcome back to the Survival Gardener Minute. I'm David the Good. Happy Lord's Day, and thank you all for helping to make Grow or Die a bestseller again. It is. It actually went inside the 1,000 ranking on Amazon. It was coming up to the top of the gardening section. It was number one in urban gardening, so I guess uh, it's the right book for this moment. So thank you. I will put a link to the book below if you do not have it. So today's question is from New Tunes for Old Lagos, who asks about dealing with snails and slugs in the garden. He says he has a smallish plot and they are a problem and he's been controlling them by hand. Is there a better way to deal with snails and slugs in the garden? Yes, there is. Like most of us, slugs and snails enjoy cheap beer. We might not say we enjoy cheap beer, but we do. All of us do, everyone does. Hipsters are faking it because there is nothing better than Miller High Life. Except maybe Bush. But here's the deal. If you put out a small tray or bowl in your garden that they can climb into, so you kind of nestle it down there into the ground a little bit, and you put it in there and you pour a little bit of cheap beer in it, overnight they will smell it. They have an incredible sense of smell, which is probably how they managed to find all of my lettuces. So if you put a little bowl out there in the garden, at night they will climb into it. And they don't like beer like we do. We drink responsibly. They do not. They drink, they fall in it, and they drown. And then you can just strain them out and drink the beer. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. That's really gross. I don't even know why I said that. I feel really bad about saying that. But anyhow, if you... <laughs> just throw the whole mess in the compost pile. Beer is good for the compost pile. So are the snails and slugs. Don't drink it, that's gross. Come on, who even came up with that idea? So if you put those, those little trays out there, they will find them and they will drown themselves. That's one method. Another method is if you've ever noticed they really like moisture. So in the warm part of the day, you don't see them. They don't like it dry, they come out at night. They like to hide someplace moist during the day. So if you put down some uh, wet boards, like here and there around your garden, they'll often hide under them at the end of the night and you can flip them over and find them and then dispose of them however you like. A salt shaker works. Now, one more thing about snails and slugs. A lot of people love deep mulch gardening. So like Ruth Stout style gardening where you have a lot of debris in your garden and it builds really, really good soil. Lasagna gardening is another method. In some climates and in places where you have a lot of slugs and snails, that can be a breeding ground for them and you can end up with a ton of them. So I had really rocky, hard soil when I gardened in Tennessee it was bad stuff and the, I decided I was gonna do deep mulch. I put down a foot of it and it was um, just fantastic. It started to loosen the clay, it made loam underneath, it put lots of compost in the soil, it had earthworms pouring in. They were the most beautiful gardens with spongy soil. But after about a year, we started to have the most epic problems with snails and slugs in the garden. So I had to do the beer trick and that's when we really learned how to do that and how well it worked. You just put a little bowl here and there around your beds, a bowl here, a bowl there, a bowl here, a bowl there. Put some cheap beer in there, just buy the cheapest stuff you can find, pour a little bit in, and they would drown themselves. But we also did hand control. You go out at the beginning of the evening, uh, particularly when it's moist out, and you go out there, you can destroy them when you see them. But the best is just let them drown themselves or put those boards down and then find them during the day and get rid of them. So there's a couple of ideas for you. If you are in a climate where slugs and snails are a big problem, you've been mulch gardening, you might just decide to compost the mulch on top and clean things up for a year or so, or even a few months, throw it in the compost pile, start again, or just go to a more bare ground gardening approach. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys. Hope you're all doing well today. I'll catch up with you soon. Be sure to like and subscribe and stick around for more of these survival gardener minutes because I'm going to be doing them right on through the apocalypse. So I'll catch you next time. And until then, may your thumbs always be green.